Georgia Tech loses three of its main playmakers out of that uh, spread option attack in 2014. Uh, we bring in Joey Weaver uh, from the Rumble seat to talk Georgia Tech football. And again, we're doing a series on replacing the stars around college football here on Mark Rogers TV. And, and this is a place where we're talking offensive line. We're talking about, again, the three main weapons on this offense, Joey. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, looking at this offense, uh, the guys that really handled the football in 2013 aren't going to be there in 2014, so we can kind of pick them off one by one. So let's start with the leading rusher, your, your B-back in there, David Sims, who ran for almost 900 yards and 11 touchdowns. Um, who looks to fill his shoes uh, this fall? Yeah, the loss of David Sims is going to be a, a fairly tough one. Um, never was a, a huge, you know, big time playmaker, but you know, a really solid be back. Did a really good job the last three years. He'll be replaced by Zach Lasky, a senior, a local guy, a um, little bit taller, you know, I guess a, a little bit of a different running style, but he's done a pretty good job playing backup the last couple of years. Uh, and then along with him, there will be the uh, true freshman Travis Custis. Uh, Custis was a part of the 2013 signing class. But uh, there were some there were some NCAA clearinghouse issues, uh, and he's now in his first semester of school this spring, um, and so he'll come in as a true freshman this fall. And, and there's a lot of theory that he he can be a real stud and really kind of be the future uh, of that position in this offense. So there's a lot of hype around him. Now let's go to the A back position with Robert Godhigh, uh, a guy that averaged almost 10 yards a carry. That, that's pretty exceptional. And the other thing that stands out to me when you look at his 23 pass receptions, uh, averaged over 20 yards per catch, and his, his long reception was only 43 yards. So he was consistently reeling in 20, 25-yard receptions downfield. So Robert Godhigh is definitely going to be missed. Absolutely. Godhigh was a real interesting case. Uh, Walk-on guy, uh, real small. He was like 5'7", 170. Um, but... A real tough guy. I always thought he played real angry. Um, he was determined that if you were going to tackle him, like you were going to earn it. So mm -hmm. he's going to be tough to replace. Um, the, the main people that are going to be playing there are going to be Sinjin Days, uh, Dion Hill, and probably B.J. Bostic, all seniors. Uh, this year there's going to be about five seniors at that A-back position. Um, and so especially after that, you know, but also somewhat this year, there's definitely a, a bit of a changing of the guard going on. Uh, there's been a lot of faces we've gotten used to seeing on the offense that uh, are about ready to be phased out through graduation. So uh, there, there's a lot of experience there, but certainly there was a reason that Godhigh was the feature A-back uh, in the offense last year. And, of course, in this offense, the quarterback it keeps the ball quite a bit, runs it down the line of scrimmage, makes his read, and then decides uh, what he needs to do with it. Uh, badly uh, at 500 yards uh, rushing last season, eight touchdowns. If you look at the yards per carry... 2.8. Now that kind of to, to sh may shock some people. I don't know necessarily how much of that is sack yardage, but uh, as a passer, again, we don't expect the precision type numbers, 65, 68% completion percentage, but badly around 45 or 46%, 11 touchdowns and 10 picks. So uh, he's going to James Madison. Your thoughts about Badley's performance uh, last season and his replacement potential? You know, Bad was another guy that there was a lot of hype about coming in, um, and, and he just kind of was a bit of a disappointment over two years. Um, not as accurate throwing the ball as we would have liked. Uh, wasn't very good at running the triple option, you know, or any other form of the option. Um, so, I mean, it, when he decided to transfer, there's, there's kind of a shock factor of, oh, your starting quarterback is transferring. But at the same time, it, it's like, what did we really lose? You know, there wasn't a whole lot lost there. Uh, kind of an average guy. He'll be replaced. The thought is either Justin Thomas, uh, redshirt sophomore out of the state of Alabama. Uh, he actually flipped his commitment to Georgia Tech from Alabama. Um, it's either him or the transfer from Middle Tennessee State, Tim Byerly. Um, both of those are looking like the leading candidates. Both have a lot going for him. Thomas won the 100-meter dash in the state of Alabama his senior year at high school. Very, very fast. Uh, they think he's pretty good at running the option as well, has a pretty good arm. Uh, the biggest knock on him is going to be his size. He's very small, uh, five foot ten, probably about 180 pounds. Uh, and so he's – that's the that's the biggest concern with him is his size. Byerly, much bigger built, um, probably a little bit better arm. Uh, not sure how, how good he is at the option relative to, to Thomas, but 
Um, a very big guy, you know, good does a good job running the ball. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see in, in spring practice who they come up with. Uh, the other interesting one I think to watch is going to be Matthew Jordan, uh, incoming freshman quarterback. He's already enrolled. He'll be in spring practice. And, uh, and Paul Johnson has made it very clear that this is a very open quarterback competition. Uh, and so you could legitimately see any of those three uh, jump up and take the job if, if that's what happens. So it's going to be really interesting to watch. Um, but, yeah, those are, the, those are your three main guys, Justin Thomas, Tim Byerly, and Matthew Jordan. Okay, Joey, so that's 2,000 rushing yards gone. Your starting quarterback, your three main rushers gone, and it doesn't necessarily stop there. You've got changes along the offensive line as well. Yep, that's absolutely right. Uh, losing, I think, your main two tackles and your center, uh, Will Jackson, Ray Bino, and Jay Finch, uh, three very steady, consistent guys. I think all of them were three-year starters. Uh, been playing for quite a while, did a pretty good job, all of them. So that's going to be another element to replace. Uh, long story short, the Jackets lose six starters on offense between the five seniors and badly transferring. And so the hope has been that, you know, some of these last couple of recruiting classes have been some of Paul Johnson's best, and the hope is that some of those guys can really step in and and not be too much of a drop-off, but only time will tell. It's It's going to be tough to replace – over half of the offense, so we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Joey Weaver writes for From the Rumble Seat, the Georgia Tech uh, website on the SB Nation platform for Georgia Tech athletics, basketball, football, and uh, baseball means something in the ACC, so I'm sure a lot of baseball there as well. Joey, with uh, offensive line changes like that and the three leading rushers gone, we're going to need you to come back for spring football to set us up and, and let us know what's going on. Looking forward to it. I'll be there. Thanks, Joey. Thank you.